Hello, Mikey O'Crikey here. Back again for another Doodle demo. And actually, this is going to be the last Doodle demo in my collective memory series. Because I have nearly finished. I've got two more to draw from all the ones that I've written. Um, and then I'll be done with my collective memories and I'm probably going to turn them into a book. So you'll be able to see them in a the book in the future. But this will be the last one I do for a Doodle demo. Um, and I'll do more doodle demos in the future, but they'll be of other things. They won't be of the collective memories. So as usual, I am going to kind of make it up as I go along. And also as usual, I'm going to start with my blue colouring pencil to do the rough sketching, to the inventing bit, sort of making up bit. And then I move on to my standard HB pencil. This one has got a collective noun on it, actually, a stand of flamingos. You might have seen this in my last doodle demo because I got this pencil with a pack of other pencils with collective nouns on it. So this one is a stand of flamingos. So the collective noun for flamingos is a stand. Um, so I do the detail in a, a stand of HB. And then once I've finished with the pencil doodling, I then convert that pencil doodle into a digital doodle using my iPad and a special package called Procreate, where I go over add in a little bit more detail and some colour and stuff. And that's what becomes my final collective memory doodle, or any of the doodles that I do actually. And for this one, it's actually gonna be a very small group of this animal. You'll see why when you actually see my final collective memory posted on my Instagram, my Facebook and my website. Um, so let's just make a start. Like I say, make it up as I go along. Some of this might be me talking along as I do it. Some of it might be speeded up, so you can see me doing it in hyperspeed. Um, but we'll see how we get on. So I'm going to start by doing a little bit of a sketch here of a box. So my box. So just start to draw a box. Very like I say, this is just the rough sketching, so I can do this quite quickly. So. So there's the box, and this box is going to say on it. There we go. Again, kind of roughly draw a uh, little written out there. I can I can make that neater later on. Right, the next thing is I'm going to draw the first one of these animals. They're going to be looking in to this box. You might notice very quickly what I know what this is. You can probably guess just from those few little uh, sketches there. So let's just carry on. Just roughly sketching at the moment. And what I, you might have seen this on some of the other videos demo videos that I put out is I might actually change my mind when I come to do the uh, detail sketching with the pencil or even later on with the um, on the iPad I might actually change my mind a little bit about some of the decisions that I've made in the, uh, in the rough sketching. I'm sure you all know what this animal is going to be. Yes it's going to be cats, well kittens to be specific. You probably would have guessed that early on and if you follow any of the other stuff that I put out on my social media and my website you'll know that I have a little kitten called Wilma. She's my favourite animal in the world so this one's kind of special because it's inspired by Wilma's antics. Anyway so there's the first kitten. And then I'm just going to do another one that is going to look quite similar to that. It's also going to be looking into the box. Now at this stage, the drawing is actually reasonably easy. If you're, if you're looking to improve the drawing or get into drawing, do some more drawing, I did definitely really recommend this method of uh, just starting by roughly sketching with a colouring pencil. It doesn't have to be blue, it's just the colour that I've chosen. And I learned this from somebody else that I found who had 
lessons on the internet. And it's just a really sort of useful way of getting your ideas down because you don't, you might have ideas in your head, but when they actually hit the paper, they don't always work. So this is a really good way. So I definitely, definitely recommend it. You can always tidy it up with the detail pencil. And if you're going over it with pen or something, that can make it tidier as well. And definitely, if you're using, if you're the, if you're the kind of dude list who is going to be using an iPad or another tablet to turn your sketches into digital images, then you'll never need to see this. So, and the final thing, so it's really, really good tip. Anyway, so there's two little kitties looking inside a craft box. And what can become what can be in the craft box? Let's just draw the edges of the craft box inside in case I need that. Might never see any of this because it might be covered up by all the other stuff that's going to be in there, but for the um, rough sketch at least it's it's nice to have it there as a background in case you need it. So things that can be inside the craft box. So here what I have is a bowl of wool with some knitting needles in it. And what else could we have? We could have just some smaller containers. So I don't know, it's a pot of something or other. That could be glue, couldn't it, or something like that. Maybe another box in front here. Oh, this is very rough. I kind of have to tidy that up when I come to do the detail. But what could be in there? I don't know. Some rubber bands or something like that. Sorry about that. I just kicked the uh, I kicked the stand that has the camera on it, and it went, made the probably made the image go a bit skewed with for a minute there. But I've tried to tidy it up anyway. So I'm back, and I've got a few things in here. Let's have a couple more things. Um, what else could we have? Maybe like a cylinder or something, this could be some wrapping paper or something like that else. What else might you have in a craft box? Um, maybe a paint pot, with some paint brushes in it. Okay, that's probably enough for now. I might add some more later when I do the, um, the detail sketching, but that's the first one. That's pretty easy actually. I've done that one really quickly. So the next one is going to be the two little kittens getting themselves up to some sort of mischief. Now what will the first one be doing? Let's just sort of do a thing here. So this is going to be the first little kitty on what they've done. So obviously a bit more close up this one. Sometimes I get myself into too much of a pickle kind of do too much detail with the blue pencil. It's kind of a, a sort of a bit of a challenge getting the balance right between too much detail and not enough. Because obviously you need to sort of give yourself a general sort of guide for what you're going to do with the detail. But you don't want to spend too much time with the colouring pencil because you end up just kind of doing things twice. If this first kitty is going to have covered itself in something. So I'm not going to do that now because I'll probably end up just doing that in the uh, iPad sketch. So I'm just going to leave that as it is for now. I'll add all its colouring and other markings and stuff when I come to do, do it with the iPad. So the next one is going to have been naughty in a different way. And that way is unravelling something. You might be able to guess what they've unravelled as I draw it. Very rough as usual. But what is that do you think? It's pretty easy to spot what it is isn't it? Yeah it's a sock. Pulling out all of the 
the wall. So let's just draw the cat, the kitty, pooing this sock apart. Okay, I think that's probably it for the, uh, the rough sketching with the blue pencil. Move over now to the HB pencil. So there we go, pencil sketching done. All I need to do now is take a photo of that on my iPad. And then, as if by magic, turn the pencil pad into an iPad. And I'm gonna do that with a snap of my fingers. And the paper pads become the iPad with no camera trickery whatsoever. Anyway, so you'll see I've already added the first of the doodles into this canvas. So I'm gonna get straight into it by the first thing I do is just to make this layer a little bit more transparent. So it allows me to sketch over it without seeing too much. Add a new layer, pull that layer outline. If you've watched any of my videos, you would have seen this all before. And then I just sketch away. for the outline and now I'm going to add some colour. So I've got new, my new colour layer and I'm going to start adding colour I think to the box. So I've picked my cardboard colour from a, another doodle that I've done in the past and I'm going to drop that colour in. So the first thing I need to do is I've got my two, I've got my two layers, colour and outline. I need to make outline referenced and that means that if I add any color into the color layer, it's going to reference the outline layer so I can fill only certain parts, but knows that that outline is there. Clever way of not having to just like do lots of coloring, I can just drop it in, so on a different layer. So I've got my color, I'll just drag and drop that in. Drag and drop that in. Drag and drop that into all of the spaces I need to add it into. And then perhaps next I'll do the cats. So I've added Wilma's main colour, which is kind of this uh, sort of off-white colour. Now I'm going to add uh, the other colours, which are like this sort of charcoal grey and this sort of gingery brown colour. <laughs> About it really because she doesn't have any of the colouring on her legs. So that's it. I think I'll leave it at that for her colouring. And what I'm going to do for the second cat is because in the rhyme they are twins, I'm going to use the same colouring. And Wilma can be trouble. She had two Wilmas can only be double trouble. So that suits the rhyme quite well. So. So there we go. They're almost a spitting image of each other, aren't they? Okay, so that's the cat's colours done, and then I'm just going to add a bit of more colour to these things that are inside the box. So there we go, first doodle coloured. Now we'll move on to the next one. So here's my next two doodles for the next canvas, and I've added the images in, and I'm going to do what I did before and make them a bit transparent and sketch away again. Start with this first kitty up here and come down 
onto the second one so you can see what this second kitty is covered in. The second kitty has its colour. Now we are going to add what it's covered in. I am going to try with a different brush type. So I normally use this kind of 6B pencil. I don't think that's going to give the effect that I want to give. So I'm going to try and find something else. Let's have a look. So if I go into here, I can change my brush types. So I could go down to some other kind of effects um, that would work. Oh, hmm, that might work. Right, I've got my Flix brush. I'm going to add a new layer. I want to make sure that. I can control it and undo it and things like that. Right, here we go. See how this works. Oh, yeah, that works quite well, actually. Get down here. Get my tail. Detail. Oh, it's covered itself in. Yep. It's glitter. A bit of silver glitter as well. What I might also do is and a bit of white, so it looks like the glitter's shining. See if that will work. That works quite well, doesn't it? So it looks like the glitter's glinting. How does that look? Maybe a bit more, actually. Now maybe actually what I need to do is draw the glitter jar knocked over. Yeah, quite happy with that. I'm just going to move them around a little bit, see if I can get this to work. I can move it like that. There we go, and I think that is it. Two cheeky kittens make a mystery from the craft box. My final collective memory doodle demo, but there will be more to come from my doodle demos and maybe some other things and bits and pieces. But to see the final collective memory with the rhyme, you need to keep an eye out on my Instagram, on my Facebook or on my website where I put my collective memories up. And down the line sometime, I will be turning it into a book so you can look forward to seeing them all together in a book. But that's it for now. And I will see you for the next video, whenever that will be. Thanks again for coming. See you next time. Bye bye.